Because I wrote my bars this week. All right. Ah. Uh, okay. And I got to get it out the first time because I ain't redoing this. Okay. Are you ready? Conclusion. All right. Jazzy on the beat. Uh, Jazzy Busser. Yeah. Uh. Act like you like the bars. Look. Look. Dope boy on the way. I got to get it every day. I'm still living on my dreams out. Shout out to MLK. Hey. Still stepping with the steppers. 10 piece lemon pepper. That ain't have nothing to do with nothing. I just want some lemon pepper. Money staying on my mind. Uh. I be staying on the grind. Lord willing, I'ma shine. I think it's really my time. I pull the trigger till it's empty. Click, click, don't tempt me. I came here to get busy. Go against me. You a 10 speed. I'ma die. Timmy going all out. I am not the one you should call out. Guarantee it's gonna be a fallout. Pull up to your house and knock a wall out. Mm. Dope boy. Slow it down. Speed it up and then I I eat it up and then I beat it up. I never see the podcast clean as us. Knowing mm. damn you can't see me. That's the homeboy. That's CT. Out of this world like E.T. Sipping S-P-R-I-T-E. Shout out to B.T. Kingsley because he be on the commercial. Just go. I, I messed it all up, but it was going to be great. You literally. you. I was, was shouting out B.T. Kingsley for the Sprite great. commercial. You. Yeah. Me. I was happy with hey, mine. Hey, man. But there it was, man. Hey, man. At least you got mine out. That's all that really matters. I mean, that's all that really matters because it's our podcast. But you shout know? out to B.T. Kingsley and all his amazing He's doing um, commercials with Sprite. It's just us. Just us, the it's Justice just us, League. Man. But I felt like we're back. I can't just be coming up in here just freestyling this mumbly wumbly. Mumbly wumbly. You know what I'm okay. saying? Hoggly woggly. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So I had to do my thing. I care about my bars enough to put 10 to 15 minutes before we got up in here. That only took you 10 to 15 minutes? 10 to 15 man, minutes, man. you really have a gift. You want to set that up so it doesn't bother you the whole show? Uh, I think I'm plugged right now. I don't think that you. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, cool. Yeah. How you feeling, man? Man, if I was any better, I'd be you. Hey, man, I don't know, man. Side note, this yeah. is what I want to lead with. Let's lead with it. I want to lead with this. Because we had this conversation today. Yep. Didn't tell you that I spring it up on you on the potty, mm -hmm. but I kind of want to figure it we out. We definitely can't call okay. this a potty. <laughs> <laughs> so, CT and I were having a conversation. So, before we came in today, I was going to call off sick. Yeah. I, you know, I hit him with a text. Hey, man, not feeling too good. Like, you know, should I read the exact text message so they hear the sure. the tenor in the text? Sure. Just so you guys hear. Just And, and I'm doing this for a reason. Mm -hmm. All right. So hold on one second. So I text my dear friend, CT. I said, uh, any way we can run the Kiara episode tomorrow and not shoot today? Haven't been feeling good all day, to be honest. I abbreviate it, to be honest, just so you know, because we have a Kiara episode in the already shot. So, yeah. So I said that to him. He said, bro, you're messing with my schedule now. You could have said this instead of the most deaf link. Because I sent him a link with most deaf. We'll talk about that later. So then I hit him with the, I was going to try and rough it out. I can't steal. I was just asking. If it messes something up, I can be there. I just ain't feeling the best. He goes to, let's just bulk shoot Monday three episodes so we could avoid issues moving forward. Then I hit him with the word vomit. <laughs> read it think the podcast works best when we discuss hot topics and take advantage of the algorithm of things the equipment issue has been rectified so speed is up to far that's not an issue moving forward and football is over in a few weeks so that's no longer an issue sundays are a go so i don't think we need to do all that and we can shoot today i'm not sick like the flu i'm not sneezing an ish I just don't feel good. And I was figuring since we had one in a can, we could just use it. And I can shoot for next week whenever. I'd rather shoot today than to start bulking three on Mondays. Let's just shoot today. I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. To with you respond with, no, nigga. I'm not, to be, I'm not about to be sick effing with you, L LMAO. It was your idea to shoot bulk in the first place. Yeah. If you feel up to shooting today, we will. But if you know you aren't up to it, we don't have to. Say it now, though. I, I felt your tone on that one. Like, stop playing with my time. Well, that say it now was like, say, say it, it now. Because I don't have time to. Because I'm going to give you the pass yeah, yeah, yeah. if you don't want to be say here. It now. But right. let me know. Because I'll tell yeah. you, go ahead. And then I said, let's shoot today. And seeing the difference in the two episodes, the shows, the algorithm effect. And I'm not sick like that. I wouldn't pull up it if I was. I hate people that spread cooties. I deal with anxiety bad, and last night and today was just kind of OD. I'll be fine. And then you said, okay, gotcha. See you at, X, at 650. The point of what I, I read all that to, mm -hmm. to, to ask people, 
is calling, if can you call in sick to your job if it's a mental health thing? Because at some point in our conversation, I felt like, I was like, am I lying to my friend? But I wasn't lying. <laughs> I just was like, cause you're like, you know, I was just like, yo, I'm not feeling good because yeah. I wasn't feeling good. And like, if I'm having like an anxious day, it's just one of those days. I can't really like, you ever just feel like super nervous or something? You just feel like, uh, and it's just like your nerves. It's just, and it was like bothering me, but it wasn't like a, you know, my nose is running like right. a snow, like, you know what I'm saying? So can you use, cause I thought about that. Like, can we in 2024 use a sick day or a day to not do something for your right. mental health? Well, in order, thoughts? I will give you this, uh, before you elaborated on everything, I thought you were like sick. And I'm like, I'm not about to be here and here with you sick. In close quarters. In close quarters. But when I said he sent the most dev link, I'm like, hey, man, first and foremost, <laughs> if you were sick, you should have told me that before you sent me a link. <laughs> talk about, hey, look at this, right? right. Number two, uh, let me break down a schedule thing. Mm -hmm. My life now goes off of calendars. Mm -hmm. So now I schedule times with my days. So it was like, we were supposed to shoot yesterday, which was Monday. Monday. But you were like, hey. That wasn't my fault. No, no, no. I'm I not blaming M you. That was MLK. You said, hey, it's MLK. Mm -hmm. I think they're doing a parade. Parade on the streets. It's and gonna it's going to be crazy. Right, right, right. I say, cool. So let's do Tuesday. Mm hmm and then you're like, bet. So then if you'd have been like today, and you'd be like, yo, let's use the Kiara episode that's right now available on the Patreon that you can watch it uh, for the past two weeks. But it's <laughs> in the chamber. Right. And I'm like, all right. Uh, but you had also said before, you were like, yeah, we can shoot like two episodes and have them stored because I'm trying to watch football. And I'm like, I hear you. So when I said, hey, let's just do three episodes next week, you're like, yeah, I don't want I'm like, this was your idea. <laughs> no. You broke this up. <laughs> Why don't we do this? And then you were like, okay, let's do this. That's a terrible yeah, idea. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. But, uh, but, but mental not. health, yes. yes. Mental health, uh, for you specifically, <laughs> if you were ever feeling like, hey, man, my mental is crazy, no pun intended, I can't get out to bed. You can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking to anything. You can't use these words. I did not mean it like that. But, uh... <laughs> Uh, uh, read the room, my guy. <laughs> my guy. So, if you were to be like, "Hey, man, I'm having, I can't get out to bed. Mm -hmm. Can we reschedule?" It's like, yeah, absolutely. Cool. But when I'm thinking, like, you got to understand the timing of you sending me <laughs> a most death video, <laughs> and then three hours later, I just got back from the gym. I'm about to heat my food up. I'm like, all right, I got enough time to eat this food, have a movement. Uh, get in a shower, shave, and then go. And bam. There. But see, you gotta also go like go through what's going on through me through that through that day. I'm just trying to figure it out. Like mm -hmm. I told you off camera, like what kind of day I was already having. Like yeah. so I'm already going through just, you know, whatever personal stuff. And then I'm just like, okay, get up. And then I see this story. I'm like, uh, like I'm still in the day trying to push myself through, like, oh, I'm gonna get to the studio. Because yeah. normally I'm here like eleven AM, but mm -hmm. you know, through the other stuff that I had going on through the day. I just, you know, just wasn't here on time. So I was just like, then when I seen the story, I was just like, yeah, we'll talk about that. Even though my mood is still mm. kind of trash. So I'm just still trying to push through. And I'm glad that we did because sometimes that's all you got to do. Just kind of just kick yourself out the bed, kick yourself out the yeah. house and then just move around. So I'm one, actually glad. I'm going to tell you this. Well, one, you're going to keep your glasses on the whole time? I don't know if that's what you was. First of all, yeah. how do you feel about them? I feel like... <laughs> I feel like because <laughs> I knew it was stuff that I'm like, well, why is he looking at me like that? <laughs> What's going on? Why is he looking at me okay. like that? I, you know me pretty well. Yeah. I, I got a confession. Yeah, well, <laughs> let's hear it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I didn't know we were gonna jump into this this early. I mean, I didn't know they were gonna stay on this long. Okay. I thought you, <laughs> I thought you were just. Read okay. the rap. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right. I mean, you don't have. Here's the thing. They, let know. me tell you what you look like with him because you asked that first. You <laughs> said, like. What do you look like with him? You look like one of your boys was like, hey, like you were like, hey, man, hook me up with your girl. And he's like, all right, I got you. And you're like, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you look like. Like you're wearing them just to meet a chick. <laughs> Doesn't look serious. Like I look, like I, look like I read books and yeah. like that. Hey, I'm Anthony. You ain't even saying no boy to him. I'm Anthony. Nice to meet you. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, they, so let me... Now you know this is crazy because I haven't even said this is your boy Doughboy yet. So. You have not. Let me tell you. True story. 
was watching last week's episode. <laughs> what is this about to be? <laughs> didn't like what I saw. Oh, what'd you see? Me. Okay. <laughs> and I didn't like how I looked. In the episode? Started to look old in the face. No. No, it's happening. No. Oh, it's happening. What do you see that the, looks old? The snakes in the grass, I call my beard. <laughs> they all over the place. Oh. And then... Because we shoot, because conclusion wants to shoot us with such good cameras. Great, Quint. Yeah, I, great, great. I seen my hair. My hair was the bullshit. I'm, I'm thinning up top. I'm mm, thinning. Okay. So I was just like, I gotta do something <laughs> to look younger. <laughs> and glasses was the answer. And the hat. I was like, this is gonna be the start. And I was like, I gotta keep losing weight, maybe shave all my, my my facial hair off. I don't know what to do. Don't shave the hair. I gotta do something. Keep the beard on your face. I look old. You don't look old, man. I absolutely. And a lot of brothers are painting. Honest their beard. enough, you can do that. I'm not painting. Okay. See, that's the thing that I'm saying. I'm not doing it because there's a lot of brothers out there. I ain't gonna put none of your brothers on. Board. They out there painting. They doing art and crap. <laughs> I refuse to. So I'm going to accept my flaws okay. in life because I'm just like, everybody getting their teeth done, everybody getting their hairline done, everybody painting their beard. I'm not doing that. Somebody in the comments said you got your teeth done. I was like, did he? I, didn't even I look was like, when teeth. did my teeth ever look bad to get <laughs> that I haven't done anything to my teeth? These are the things aesthetically that I can't deal with. I don't know what to do. <laughs> but I figured the glasses and the hat would throw them off my trail. <laughs> And then five minutes into the episode, you like so you just go wear it the because whole but everybody, <laughs> this guy here, you put him on right when you were about to rap. So I was like, all right, this is just for the rap. And then you just was like, you put the phone down. I was, like, <laughs> I was just hoping you didn't say it. I don't even feel right with glasses. I feel stupid. You never wear them. I got to do something to take some 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 uh, attention away from my face. Here's the thing, and what people won't know about you is you saying if you're making a. You're making a, a statement about what most people feel, mm. which is like this fear of getting older, which I completely understand. I know everybody else does this, that's aging. And the difference is you are so dramatically older than everybody <laughs> that I'm shocked oh, that you feel like this. Oh, you just thought out there that I, <laughs> like, yeah, man, don't be afraid, but you really are. <laughs> you're like your age. It's but crazy. No, but <laughs> First because you're such a young man, <laughs> but age-wise, that's not what the government says. <laughs> <laughs> you're shit, man. But, let me, I, but I'm pretty sure this hasn't happened to you. What? But understand that one day it might. Oh, I know. You ever just looked at yourself on camera? Because we be on camera a lot. Mm -hmm. And just be like, whoa. Do I be like, whoa. whoa? Let me tell you something, bro. <laughs> I was like, who is this old nigga? Oh, wait, that's me. You talk about age. Let's talk about size. Oh, come I've on, you can't at, have that conversation with me. I've looked at some old sketches, bro. And not even old, old. Like, maybe eight, nine months of sketches that I had done last year. And I was looking at myself and I was like, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? You know what I mean? So it's like, I get it, man, where you got to make a change. Side note, speaking of me with no facial hair, remember when we shot the battle and I didn't have no oh. facial hair? <laughs> oh. We got to pin the battle <laughs> in here. There's I don't want to see that video. <laughs> I had no facial hair. You were still slim CT. I was so slim. I was also very poor, but I was so <laughs> slim. Because a lot of people correlate... <laughs> <laughs> like, like skin was a choice. <laughs> yeah, like I was skinny because it's like, oh, I'm healthy. I could not afford food. And at that time, I was very small. You were and, involuntarily uh, fit. <laughs> had abs without trying you to. You did. Abs. You used to have the whole, like the protrusive jawline just Thanks. out. Thanks for that. <laughs> okay, man, you, you you pointed out attention to my glasses, man. And now you, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I had to have some that's veil to fair. trip at to get back. That's fair. How's everything else going in life with you, though, man? Oh, uh, it's How about a minute ago. I was great. I was having a great life. <laughs> uh, I was very happy with my body. And uh, then it all came down like a hot of fire. <laughs> Do you want a, a, a weight update? Oh, let's hear it. I've been bouncing up and down like a yo-yo. Okay. So, like I told you. Started at 3.55 yeah, on October 9th, um, got down to 3.08, um, December 17th, mm -hmm. ballooned back up to 3.26, I right. think last time we talked. That was last week. Last week. Got on the scale this week, 3.18. Come on, man. Hey, so I'm back in the 3 teens. back in there. My goal. You a teenager. Yes, there we go. Trying to get out the threes yeah. before that young February. You understand that? Oh, you got two weeks. You can do yeah, that yeah. easily. So, yeah, just pushing, you know. I want to um, start lifting weights more, but I, th I feel like I'll do it more as a out of the 300 pounds, man. I hear that. I was thinking, I was like, man, running 
works and jogging and all of that stuff, but it's like it's a lot of extra pressure on your knees. Oh you yeah, dropping a lot. So it's like coming down more mm -hmm. or doing whatever you want. Walking yeah, yeah. fast helps. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's what I'm saying. I just felt like you know because I was just at 308 a couple of weeks ago. So I'm just like let me. Get back down to that neighborhood. Yeah. Let me get out of the threes, a terrible neighborhood to live in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, just keep keep going to uh, get to that 225. Let me tell you something, man. Uh, ran into the homegirl a week ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's lost a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. And when I was talking to her. I was like, hey, so have you had your buddy love face? And she's like, what, what's, what's that? And I was like, ah. <laughs> and I told her. I was like, mm -hmm. you know, basically when you go from being a nutty professor to buddy love, this confidence that you did not have when you were uh, – Sherman Hemsley, I mean mm -hmm. Sherman Hemsley, when you were Sherman <laughs> Cologne, you have now. Like, you mm -hmm. feel extremely sexy, you feel confident, right? all of that stuff. And she was like, oh. And I was like, and you start going after all the people that you could not get when you were bigger. Mentally, you thought you couldn't get. Right. And uh, her girl was next to her, and she was like, oh, she been there for a minute. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so Wild she the hell out. You know, normally women are different than men in that regard. Sometimes. Women, a lot of the times, will walk around with the fat jeans, yeah. pull them out. You didn't want me at my worst. You don't deserve me when I'm first. They say stuff like, <laughs> like What? <laughs> they say stuff like this. At my worst, you don't deserve <laughs> me at my first? That, uh, that's what they say. Uh, but like with, with guys, like yeah. when I had dropped on my way and I was having my buddy love face, I was trying to tag everything like, oh, well, you didn't want me? I wouldn't have wanted me neither. Come on, they do it now. No, boy. <laughs> you thought. were a monster. Spinning the block. But here's the thing. It's Spin like again. when you become buddy love, <laughs> Spin again. you want you it's like you're making up for lost times. That's what buddy love is. Right. And you were so, because you're not used to being this new you. Mm -hmm. So you go into overdrive. You were a monster. And not in a good way. Oh. Not proud. Like I was a dick. Yeah. I was a jerk. You earned it though. I was a jerk. I just remember like it, it was just. I don't know because I think that when you when you go through such a you know tumultuous time yeah. growing up and and you feel like girls is just dogging you oh. and then it's just like it's finally a chance to just yep tip these scales I was you remember yes I probably was not I, no I'm not I'm not even gonna say probably I wasn't even a good friend I was just like I just it was just like away with you like I just didn't have, I just didn't have much words for people that's the thing that makes me a little. No, no, no. I feel like I've been humbled enough in life mm. that when I get these abs, I'm going to be cool. But if God would have gave me abs in the buddy love phase. Oh, 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 oh. here's the thing, man. Get me out of there. Man. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the truth, man. I've been Sherman Clump and Buddy Love enough times to where you've never been Sherman Clump. You've never been that big. It, I, it, it just irks me when people that have never been that big get in the presence of me, who is at one point four eighty six and talk that big shit. Understand that biggest perspective. <laughs> okay. And when I was at my largest, the world did not see me. I disappeared from a lot. So imagine me seeing myself in the sketches that I was extremely <clears throat> large in. That was me smaller than I was in the what, world. What was the what was the biggest? When, when were you at your biggest? Uh, like what year would you say? Going <clears throat> into the pandemic. Going into the pandemic, I was. 333. Shut up. Yeah, man. Really? Yeah, I was up there. I never when seen When we went to Detroit, I was I had just lost I had had that young Coco 19. Okay. And I had thank goodness for that Coco at the time. I had dropped from 333. <laughs> thank for the Coco 19. The Coco saved me. Sometimes but. when you get something you be like, "Well, I'll take it. I'll get this quick little <laughs> I went from 333 to 317. Wow. So when we went to Detroit in 2021, August 2021, I was 317. Wow. And it was like, all right, I could try and keep this up. But I was still severely out of shape. Like I was sweating hard, just moving across the stage. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, my biggest 333. And at that time, I was like, Whew, well, I guess this is what I am now. Like I wasn't even trying to. You carry it well. I never thought you was ever. I never thought you even crossed over into the threes. Oh, brother! But I, I never was, thought that you carry it well. Not only did I cross over, <laughs> I was having meat and grease. I was like, yeah, hey. so I'm have some chicken. I'm gonna meet that steak. <laughs> I'm gonna meet that. <laughs> I'm gonna meet that steak. I'm gonna meet that chicken. You understand that? Woo! But yeah, man, buddy, love boy. So now I, I, 
I'm seeing the light at the end of my tunnel mm -hmm. and it's becoming a humble buddy love. I'm not going to make the mistake that I did before. Yeah. When I, when I get there now, it's just more for, you know, I want to get into the body that I want to grow old in. Ooh, bars. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm not doing it for, bars. you know, for, uh, for uh, vanity reasons. I'm not doing it just to say that I did it. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I want to, you know, cause I don't, I don't know no 65 year old, 300 pounders. You know right. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, and when you think about it, like our bodies have to work so much harder to, you know what I'm saying? Like if somebody yeah. of my size, you know, just to, <clears throat> you know, circulate blood through my body and all that. So I'm doing it for those reasons, but <clears throat> I'm going to get down to 225 and I just want to see how I look. Once I get there, like when, I don't what was know. your smallest when you got down? Like 260, 255. 255, you looked like you were 220. Let me show you the picture, man. Hold on a <laughs> hey, let me tell you what you always have <laughs> is you always got that slim picture, no matter oh, yeah. what. Yo, boy. I keep that. Oh, uh, you want to see? Let me get my albums real quick. Let me get this for you real quick. Hold on a second. Because it was just, it you was, was just dying your hair every week. You were no, a that different wasn't even, guy. That wasn't even. No, 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 no. That was. When I was dyeing my hair, when I had the red beard, I still was in the threes. Really? Yeah, I'm about to show you a picture of of me when it was like, yeah, that's when. And this and this is the crazy part is I still have um I still have like a lot of these clothes. Oh, you gotta throw those away. I'm not throwing those away. You wait, these are the slim clothes? Hold on, I could show you this. This was me, this was me at like 270. Oh, uh, y'all seen this picture before. <laughs> But that wasn't even the picture that I was trying to show you. There was one with me smaller. Hold on, I just couldn't find it. I didn't want to waste too yeah, much time. I'm looking for it. Oh, here we go. That's that one. That's that, that's that Sammy. I cup. never <laughs> saw this. <laughs> can can y'all see it? Can you zoom in? Yo, that's crazy. This is when you are the epitome of I am small. When you salmon, take a picture. salmon color jeans, man. Salmon jeans. Salmon jeans, size 36. Ooh, 36. And, and trade sixes without the And you mafia, weighed how much? About 255. Okay, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. 30 pounds. But see, when I didn't have no muscle definition still, too. I had mm. just lost weight, even though I didn't have like the extra skin. But when I get down to 225, I want to be diesel, though. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's so, possible. So that's my goal, man. Like, my goal is to by the end of, uh, end of February, um, be down to 285 and then just lose 10 pounds a month. Here's the thing. For six months. All right. That's great. And it sounds good. But what are your daily goals to get there? <clears throat> Do cardio on an empty stomach. Follow the keto diet. Um, you, see, you're already doing too much. Hold on. What is your plan for the rest of the night? Not go to 7-Eleven and, and do those things that I be doing. Then that is the true goal. Yeah. The goal isn't, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to just eat all salads and drink water, and I'm going to just do like two hours of cardio. Wait, hold and on. And then, is this, bam. Is this the same guy that was just sitting here last week that had a full-off binge right before midnight? So he goes, how is your diet? Oh, yeah. How is your thing going? Oh, it's going great. No Here's fried fruits, no desserts? No. Here's the thing. So my thing was no sodas, no fried food, no desserts, right? And what happened? So Tangerine. <laughs> How'd you bring my sister into this? Tangerine was like, I mean, you ain't doing what I'm doing, so you might as well eat the cookie. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And then she was like, I mean, you just had, what'd she say? Sunday, I had uh, cheesecake pancakes at IHOP. Right, what I was is, like, "This is not dessert. This is this is a pancake." And she was like, "That's see, see. it's dessert." And I was like, it's "Clearly dessert in pancake in breakfast form." So I took the L. <laughs> I took the L. I said, "Cool," because I hadn't had anything else, right? And then she was like, uh, "So today, before we did the show, <clears throat> mind you, did the gym and everything." She was like, "I got some gluten free cookies on the counter," and I was like, "Why is this in the house?" Because <laughs> I'm gonna do. It can't be in the house. That's how I am with liquor. So she's like, uh, you might as well eat it. You're not doing what I'm doing. I'm like, what are you, you're doing what I'm doing. No sodas, no fried foods, no uh, desserts. <clears throat> she said, you had the pancakes on Sunday. Um, and you still been drinking sugary drinks. I'm like, I haven't had no soda. She was like, it's the same thing. I was like, <laughs> so I'm not getting no credit, right? Right. So I'm looking at the gluten-free cookies and I'm like... <laughs> Man, I ate some damn Did you knock back a sleeve? No, sir. I had two cookies. That's it, just the two. Yeah. Did you? Can you even taste the difference between gluten-free cookies and regular? Yes. Really? Yes. 
gluten free tastes like oh great the scale is still gonna be the same tomorrow <laughs> regular cookies <laughs> taste like shame and it tastes so good man mm, that good old shame that's what i did last week that i didn't do the prior weeks i just wasn't having snack runs yeah so i had it's like with the exception of and the fact this is the blessing that i'm able to count the things that i've done wrong mm. which apparently is eat the pancakes and eat these two cookies but i mean that's good man progress not perfection you heard i always say that man but here's the thing it's like when you got somebody like tangerine she's like she'd be on your head like you're doing all this wrong stuff you like i i'm doing great i'm in the gym every day i'm eating healthy i just happen to have pancakes on sunday and she's see, like well you yeah. might as well have a soda and i'm like i'm not see, doing that see i figured this out man you just made it all clear as day to me brother what you got to stop looking to her for the accountability partner. Join me. We're both on the same page. We're coming from the same place. We have the same things that we deal with. We're both guys. You know what I'm saying? We're both at least relatively close in age. We're both trying to work out. I'm not going to like be on your head like that. If you mess up and you call me, I'll be like, hey, brother, what are you going to do for the rest of the night, though? And then you just get on it. I wouldn't be on you like that. Join me. Only one problem. What? We are definitely not close in age. But however... <laughs> <laughs> hey, out of that whole boy, soliloquy, yo, <laughs> don't boy be trying to. Oh man, hey you guys, we the same. No man, you are extremely more youthful than I am, but Listen, you are older. We are not than everybody. finna paint the narrative that I'm just old out here. Don't boy, I will go back to lying about my age. I had, to, <laughs> I had become very comfortable yo, with embracing it. You are Peter Pan. <laughs> You will never get old, bro. Me, I've been getting called old since I was like 10. <laughs> People have been like, oh, what, you 18? I'm like, I'm 10 years old, bro. But, but, but see, it's, uh, there's starting to be things that I can't do to keep up with the youth no more. Like what? Grow braids. You can't grow hair anymore? No. Mm. My sunroof is like, nah. The sunroof. <laughs> That's what Billy Billy Sorrells kept saying on Roast Me. <laughs> he kept saying, Carl ain't got no roof. I was like, stop saying that. Because I, I know it's good for the show, but it's hurtful for how I feel. <laughs> Yo, let me t let's talk about Roast Me for a second. Dope boy. Niggas was killing me last season, man. Roast Me is the number one cause of hurt. Oh my God. I have secondhand hurt watching the show for people. Last season was terrible. Like, Pat, <laughs> this is a fun fact. I've never said this yeah. publicly. Never said this publicly. I was getting hosed last season. Like, I couldn't get a word in edgewise. Mm. I didn't know what was going on. So much mm. to the fact, and Dave Killer will attest to this. I hit up B. Lou and Patrick, like, Hey man, I'm sorry, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's... If you gotta bench me, you gotta bench me. <laughs> if you gotta bench me, Pat's a real nigga too. He's like, nah, man. Just just keep doing, man. You'll I love you'll, shoot, you'll shoot yourself out of this slump. I'm like, wait, I'm in a slump. <laughs> in the slump. The fact that he saw it. <laughs> Friend of the show. Shout I was, out to Pat. Yeah, shout out Pat, man. Shout out B. Lou. But I was getting washed. I couldn't take it. Like everybody always asks, like, uh, like, hey man, <laughs> hey man, you gonna get on roast me? You gonna do wild and out? I'm like, listen respect to everybody on Wild and Out and Roast Me. Mm. I do not have the skill set to do Wild and Out mm -hmm. and I don't have the self-esteem to do Roast Me. <laughs> There's no, here's the thing. Once I do Roast Me, nobody's walking out of there alive. <laughs> Everybody's, <laughs> you think, <laughs> Hey man, CT such a nice guy. Put me on roast. Man. Ain't nobody walking out. The Seb camera crew got to get it. Sebastian the assassin go show up. Out of there, bro. Because that video is not seeing the light of day. Oh, no, niggas will just cook, man. Niggas yeah. be just it, it. And I, you know, I was fortunate enough to be to be on both. Fortunate to be on both, both. But, uh, but the what it will do to your self esteem and your roasting skills are crazy. Not, You're so not, multi talented. Not with these guys, it, it'll make you question everything. Like seriously, like like being on both of those shows and have you questioning everything, be like, did I? But here's the thing: did I too. really move to Los Angeles? <laughs> <laughs> Sacramento was treating me quite well. <laughs> Your gift for both shows was like this, though. It was like I'm saying this as a fan of yours. I never watched you on Wild and Out, even when I worked on the season with you. Mm -hmm. I didn't watch Wild and Out or roast me to see you get the better of people. Mm -hmm. I watched to see how you reacted to people saying things to you because it was always funny if you say a joke that doesn't land oh, yeah, and yeah. you'd be like, 
Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, and shout out, shout out. I, I want to give credit where credit's due. Shout out Niall Evans. Yeah, man. Niall taught me that that skill with how to uh, fail gracefully. He was like, you know what I'm saying? He, I'll never forget. He was like, whether it's a bell or a buzzer, it's going to make the show. So, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So sometimes, you know what I'm saying? You might think it's not, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody can't hit every time. Right, right, right. And what it taught me was, you know what I'm saying? Like, shout out to uh, now, like I was saying, but it taught me how to fall into a joke. You ever oh. like see somebody get roasted, then they have like a oh. fucked up look on their face. Then it's not fun. It's like nobody can have fun. Oh. But if you get hit with a joke, you're like, yo, you stupid. Then it's like we're all having fun. The reaction makes it better. It's like when I, when I watch Roast Me, and I won't say the names, mm. but there are some comedians that go on there and they get roasted and you can see it on their face. They'd be like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what well, fuck is this nigga talking? About? Yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying. And it's like, right. come on, bro. Like that's not fun for right. the audience. Exactly. But if you hit somebody and yeah. they just laughing more than oh, you, the then best. it's just like this is the homies just shooting the desert. Yeah, and it feels better. Even like my favorite part of the show is when B. Lou be like, <laughs> "Come on, <laughs> come on, <laughs> <Did> I see?" <laughs> Bro, I, I was getting sent to detention so much. I was like, man, just leave me here. Just leave, just leave me. me be. Yeah. <laughs> there were some people that it's like, I love seeing you on there and all of the, the stars of the show. And I even love when you guys give the newer people a chance. Uh -huh. But the problem is new people come on there thinking that it's really a show about roasting. And yeah. it's not. It is. It's a comedy show. It's an ensemble comedy yeah, show. Yeah, man. And yeah, and sometimes you have people just coming in and they just feel like, oh, I'm going to earn my respect. And then it, that can mess up the feng shui and the functionality and the natural flow. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because I'm it's like, you're, but it's like, let's take you out of that show. One of my favorite things about you is when we hang out, you're... <laughs> <laughs> you're such a nice guy, but you're not a pushover. Right. And I think that's what people don't realize. <laughs> so it's like, you'll be kicking it and everybody be like, it's like that one dude. <laughs> Look at my man over here with these shoes. You'll be like, oh. <laughs> and then you kill him Ding. and they don't see it coming. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So yeah, man. Um, what else is going on, man? Oh, what you want to talk about your boy? Who, oh, oh. Bring it up. Okay. But, but, but before that, okay, let's talk about my other boy. Okay. Martin Luther King. Yes, man. Martin Luther the King. Friend of the show. Yeah, friend of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. I went with it too. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait. Hey, hey, I know. <laughs> anybody that we are a fan of yes. or that we got love for or has a friend impacted of the show. our lives is a fan of the show. Yeah. Cool. So um, it was his birthday and we recognized it the other day. Um, how you feel about it, man? How has uh, Martin Luther King impacted your life? I'll tell you this. It made my conspiracy theory go through the roof. Whoa, you have one? I love these. Share with us. Yeah, well, I don't know if you know this, and I, I don't even want to say too much because, you know, I don't want this video to be targeted. But right, right, right. Um, there was a entity of the GOV mm -hmm. that took him out. And it was proved that they took him out by his wife filing a lawsuit and winning mm. with proof that they took him out. And once you know that a power is capable of doing that to someone, you start to look at the world differently and you stop looking at things as if they are black and white. And you start looking at things beyond the scope of what your own understanding is. My mother taught me that <laughs> as a child. So... Once you see, it's like, if everybody's looking at this thing, mm -hmm. these people get a chance to walk through this door undetected. So instead of looking at everybody looking at this over here, it first started for me with the ice bucket challenge. Mm -hmm. You start looking at the ice bucket challenge and what it really stood for, which was ALS. And then you're like, hey, what's, what's going on over there? And they're like, oh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> right, you know right, what right, I mean? Right, right. Similar to uh, a lot of other conspiracy theories. I don't want to go too deep into it. But anyway, that's how I feel about the brother. I, I love the impact that he had for our our world. It's not just our culture. Mm -hmm. And it is very unfortunate that he his that he had such a short time with us. Facts. No, I um <clears throat> definitely was, you know, impacted, you know, by by Martin Luther King. Um, you know, he he sacrificed a lot, you know, for us to be here. And I don't know, like, I, I, I think like I feel like this every like once a year. Like, I feel like on his birthday, I don't know if it's just when his birthday comes up, I feel like this. I feel like I should stop using the N word. 
Because I just be feeling like, you, you know, dropped I mean? it six times today. <laughs> I know, but I just feel like he he went through through so much. And I'm just like, man, I'm just still out here using that word. And then I feel just like, I don't know, I just feel like wanting to be more woke and just be more of a responsible person. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just because he went through so much for us. So I just be wanting to be more part of, I want to be, I know what I'm trying to say, but it's hard for me to say. It's like, I want to be more like knowledgeable about things and learn more about things and just a better representation of a black man because he was such a dope black man. Well, here's That's the thing. I, I love that you said that, but <clears throat> by being a black man, you are dope within yourself. So it's up to you to decide what type of man you want to be and how you want to be seen. And uh, don't put too much pressure on yourself to be a certain type of image because you'll never make everybody happy. These are facts. Yeah. No, no, I'll just be one to... Um, I be wanting to just know a little bit more. Like I told you with my quest to be a nutritionist and different things like that. Like I just be, I just want to start cracking these books open. A little What's bit stopping more. you? You say it like there's a, a gatekeeper at the <laughs> library that's like, nah. <laughs> nah, fam. Not you. <laughs> Turn your ass around, fam. Damn it, man. <laughs> just wanted to read one book. Nah, not today. <laughs> well, shout out to Martin Luther King, friend of the podcast. Always love. Now let's get into the venom I'm about to strike down. Whew. So... <clears throat> Over the, the weekend, um, there was a clip that dropped with most deaf. Should I just play it? Will we get will we get struck if I play it? You we'll will get, get struck. If even if it's just audio? Audio, no, you can play audio. I just want I just want you guys just to hear what what the man said, man. And it was just What's on, interesting second. is your love for Drake has no bounds. And I didn't realize you love this man like that. I'm like, I'm a fan of him. He's actually the longest. Here we go. Here we go. Is Drake hip hop? Is Drake hip hop? Mm. Why are you doing this to me? I know. Drake is pop. Because we're here for truth. We're here for truth. Drake is Drake is pop to me. Right. That's fair. In the sense that he. It's this Jordan Tower, which. Oh, oh, hold on. Oh, oops. Talk about not being prepared. Hold on. Why did that just play that? Drake has had the longest hot streak of any uh, rapper. Jay Z was holding a, a record is for it. Hip -hop? Oh, I don't know why I just played that. Hold on a second. Okay, sorry about that. Is it, it's charting like pop music, popular music. Hmm. In the sense, like if I was in Target in Houston and I heard a Drake song. So it feels like a lot of his music. Okay, so let's just stop it there because I don't even want to take a chance of us getting struck with him. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> so what 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 most deaf essentially did, <clears throat> and a lot of uh, older hip hop cats always do this whenever Drake is brought up. Mm -hmm. They use that card. He ain't hip hop. It's the easiest way to try to discredit somebody. That's a way. If an artist is a hip hop artist, that's the easiest way to discredit them. Call them pop. That means that you're you're alienating them from hip hop. You're saying you're, you're essentially saying that's not real hip hop. That's watered down hip hop. We don't respect it as hip hop. The reason why I I disagree now, mind you, Most Def is a dope artist. I'm not taking anything away from him. He's a dope artist. Represent Rockus Records. He I think he did an album with a. Uh, Twalib Kwali was that black star like dope dude he can rhyme like you know what I'm saying nothing against him but what I hate so much and this is why I hate when people spew hatred for Drake people act as if a run like what Drake is doing has ever been seen in the history of hip hop and it has not he has simply he has been on top you can arguably say since he dropped a mixtape in 2008 so far gone. You can arguably say he's been in the top five artists since that time period. So since that's a 16 year run and he's making records about his life. He doesn't make up fictional tales about selling drugs and doing all this other stuff. Like he makes up raps about his life and he puts it out and he's, he's the dude that drops the music the most consistently. And it's just a very scary premise to be the most popular artist, the most highest selling artist, the dopest artist. And then your peers just hate on you for no apparent reason. It just irks me in a way that I can't fully articulate with words. Seem like you articulated it perfectly. Uh, <laughs> I could be wrong. Uh, so here's the thing, man. It's a case of the haves and the have-nots. This is what it always boils down to. People always ask the artists like a most dev who are legends with their own their own right and mm -hmm. what they've done in the space of entertainment 
and music. But they always ask these artists these things. And they never go for the artists who are also considered hip hop royalty kings meaning mm -hmm. uh you're not about to ask somebody like a jay-z who had a similar run right you're not about to ask an artist like uh let's say a kanye a kanye yeah. or an i wouldn't gonna say kanye because i know him and drake had their thing right, before right. but you're not gonna ask a 50 cent all of these things right. because these guys were so popular that their hip-hop music became pop music as far as sales yes. and popularity yes so when you go to it's no different than when nelly first got hot and KRS Run had KRS One had a problem with him, mm -hmm. and it's like ah, this goes to the haves and the have nots because you can look at KRS One and know that he is a body of hip hop and he's one of the kings of this thing. And this is no disrespect to him at all, but you know that there is a difference in album sales between a KRS One and a Nelly. Just like there is a difference in album sales between a Drake and a Most Def. Not saying that album sales make an artist popular, um, but album sales put you in a different category to be looked at as less than if they are not doing what you do that is considered to be authentically hip hop. Yeah. And see, I'm glad that you said that because I feel like hip hop is the only genre of music where you get criticized for being the highest seller. It's always been like that. Mm -hmm. Like when Hammer was selling all the records. Oh, look, he Ice. sell out. Look yeah, at him. Yeah, it's like, like every time, it's like if you start, chicken. but it's like when you, when you start, pull, when you pull out music, isn't the point to get it to as many people as possible? Let's go back to that. You said MC Hammer. When MC Hammer did mm -hmm. that KFC commercial, I believe, everybody was calling him a sellout and mm -hmm. they were saying, oh, he that ain't hip hop. He doing commercial. And fast forward, look at all these hip hop artists that went and crossed over and started doing commercials all and started doing movies and television shows. Just because you are somebody that's doing it at a high level, people are always going to look at you with a crab in a bucket mentality. I guarantee you, and this is, you know, I have nothing but love for most deaf, but I guarantee you if uh any of his songs had the reach that drake's songs have this would be a completely different conversation crazy thing is if i had a thousand dollars for you right now and said name me three most deaf songs i still had that thousand dollars in my pocket that's wild <laughs> that's wild. And that's for most people. I mean, conclusion would probably walk off with the thousand. Yeah, I would have to walk off as well. But I got nothing but love for most people. Yeah, but that's what but see, I think I think it's veiled hate. I think that he most deaf is in a is in a, a stupid individual. No, he's a very very thug. smart. You know what this is gonna come off. You know this is gonna go viral. You know, like, and that's just my biggest and and that's where like it's like when when it's other rappers that do it, it's like, okay, so you're actually a rapper and you actually tried to put out music. You tried to be as successful. And I don't want to hear that. I didn't want to put out music that was going to sell to the masses because I'm real hip hop. No, nigga, if you could have sold 100 million records, you would have did it too. So you see somebody that has done the same thing that you're doing. They did it at a far more successful commercial weight rate than you. And then the easiest thing for you to do is somehow critique it and say it's not real hip hop because you know that you're an old head in this. Not, And I don't mean old head in a disrespectful way, but you're a senior I don't want to say senior, like, because that's a bad thing. You're like a leader, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, one of the forefathers of this hip hop stuff. So, you know, your word is respected. So, you know, if you say he ain't hip hop, a lot of people that you could just, you know, use that to discredit him. And so it's not that I'd be such a Drake stan or anything. It's just like people hated Will Smith I, <laughs> and he was the first Grammy winner. Him and Jesse Jeff is like. You can't win. It's the haves versus the have nots, bro. When you look at Drake and you look at everything he's achieved and you look at these things affect these artists because Drake responded with a video. Yeah, uh, some, yeah. Some, he put something on his Instagram. Yeah, but but I have a I have a metaphor to, mm -hmm. to give to you. I think that this will be perfect for this. I liken most deaf talking about Drake. Mm -hmm. How sometimes I hear other comedians talk about a Kevin Hart. Absolutely. I'm so glad you said that. You see that. what I'm saying? <laughs> One. It's just like, man, that nigga ain't really funny like that for real. You got to stop dropping in. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're 10 in. Oh, yeah. This gotcha. is going to be yellow. Gotcha. But I will say, uh, number one, when it comes to music, mm -hmm. when it comes to comedy, you don't own the genre to be able to say what is and what is not of Facts. that genre. Right. It's no different than in comedy when um, 
social media came out and the comedians were like, that ain't real comedy. Mm -hmm. You put them on a stage, but you they won't be funny. Right. But I guarantee you that audience is going to be packed exactly. because they want to see that. They don't mm -hmm. want to see what we deemed as authentic comedy. And mm -hmm. when you go to a Kevin Hart, people always take shots at the top. I guarantee you nobody is taking shots at Carrot Top. No disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Nobody's, <laughs> nobody's taking shots at Carrot Top. Ain't nobody taking shots at... Charles Ice Cream Washington <laughs> down in the South, which I'm sure he's a very funny comedian. Right, right, right. I, that name popped out to me and it right. never uh, left my head. It was just a great name. Right. But it's like nobody's <laughs> taking shots at comedians that are not household names and or selling millions of uh, tickets. So it's just, it's, it's almost like he's being penalized for being successful. And that's yeah. the thing that irks me. Ain't nobody talking about if Rich Boy is hip hop. <laughs> If Murphy Lee is him, what happened to Rich Boy? That's my point. Robocop looking so <laughs> Rich Boy looked like Robocop. He had a lot of forehead. <laughs> <laughs> New money. <laughs> what did happen to him? I feel like him and Hurricane um, Chris. I feel like him and his producer just kind of just. Dine? Yeah, what happened to Polo to die? I don't know, man. Polo to <laughs> He just rode off on that horse. Polo. <laughs> He ran off with a horse. Jeez. I, but here's the thing, man. You don't own the genre to be able to say what is and what is not. And at the same time, I really get annoyed when artists tear, tear each other down yeah. in the form of where you know people are looking. Because it would have cost you nothing to say, hey, what do you think of Drake? Oh, man, I love what he's doing and nothing but love and respect. Do you think he's hip hop? I mean, I think everything Everybody's is hip-hop nowadays. Hip -hop, right. They got hip-hop in China. That's the way you answer that question. Is, and so that's what made me feel like he was just being... It either it could it could just be one of two things. One, you just want smoke with Drake, and you just want him to know that you don't really vibe with him. Or two, there's something else that you want to bring attention to, and you know this is going to go viral, so maybe this will be on the you know, the, the tail end to make people pay attention to that. Listen, man, people Because you got to know that this don't sound right coming off. And I hope... I just hope Drake get back in his bag and just get to smoking people, man. What do you mean? He's been in his bag for 16 years. It's just... A, it's, There's it's, nothing he can do but continue to win. Sometimes when you're on top, it's so easy to respond. But I remember Jay-Z saying, and this is an old quote, him saying, uh, never argue with fools because people from a distance can't tell who is who. Mm -hmm. He's like, I shoot you. You shoot me, you You're famous. famous. I, I shoot, shoot you, you, I'm brainless. brainless. What's, What's the end to do? To do? Yeah, because yeah, we don't want this to be yellow. It's, it's definitely already yeah, yellow. Yeah, but it's like when you look at that, that's so real. It's like if he takes a shot from his throne you're about to go through the roof sales, tours. Mm -hmm. But if you say something and I don't respond, it's not going to be heard. They all, they all, there's another quote like that too. They say, uh, a, a dog howls at the moon every day. But if you ever see the moon how the, the, the dog and if you saw that's the moon be, how back that's a, yeah <laughs> exactly that's what it's gonna be we all gonna be scared that's what's gonna be a problem but now nah, i just i don't know man because i just feel like even with drake like even with what joe budden did earlier you know like you know last year when he was you know because i feel like drake even when you talk and this is why me in conclusion getting to like drag down arguments because i'd be like listen bro if nothing else drake and his counterparts and we can basically count call his counterparts Big Sean, um, Kendrick, um, J. Cole, um, J. Cole Good class. Uh, Wale, like these different guys, right? I wouldn't really put Wale in there, but you know. Um, but these, these, <laughs> he caught a stray. Well, I'm just saying, Wale just been gone for a long time. He, when's the last time? I'm, okay, okay, enough of Wale. Okay. So. <laughs> So Wale, I'm sorry. Bro. Hey, so uh, friend of the potty, though. So um, with these guys, they're his contemporaries, right? Yeah. Drake drops far more frequently than any of these guys. Yeah. Cole don't be dropping. Kendrick drops every once in a while. And a lot of times when he drops, it's just like, I, I, it's, you know, it'd be a All lot. Right. <laughs> it'd be like, it's a lot. So I just feel like if nothing else, Drake lets his music talk for him. Yeah. He's not one of the dudes that be doing a bunch of interviews and antics. He just gives you music. He gives you his honest perspective every single time. On his last album, he gives us music so much that when he dropped it, People was hating on it like this ain't hip hop enough. That went back in the lab, dropped another six piece, mop. Like you know what I'm saying? What other artist is doing that? So I just feel like for as much as he does that, he don't get none of the recognition. And I feel like we're not gonna appreciate him totally until he stops making music. It goes with comedy too, man. We see. I saw this. Um, I saw this brother 
Justin Silva, I think his name is, Instagram dude. Mm-hmm. Um, Trev in New York was on a, a tour with him, did some shows in New York, uh, or Connecticut, I'm sorry, and sold out seven shows back to back, right? And I'm like, man, that's amazing to see this brother have seven sold out shows in Connecticut. His audience came out to see him. And I looked at that and I said to myself, this is amazing. And at the same time, there are going to be people that hate on this man. And at sometimes you just got to let your numbers speak for themselves. The people who are your fans are always going to defend you and love you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not even up to you to defend somebody. Because one thing you'll always see in the comments when people are talking about Kevin Hart or talking about Drake or they talking about any artist, somebody in the comments is going to be like, I ain't never liked such and such. Well, I ain't even a fan of them. I think they whack. Like, who who cares what you think? This person has 300 million off one album. Yeah, no, I've, and I've seen that with comedians too. Like, I won't even say no names, but like, I've seen other comedians hate on other comedians. Like, you'll see a comedian blow up. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Be doing massive stuff. They'll be like, oh man, he just he just blew up because he started doing this. He started doing this. Yeah. It's just like, man, shut up. He ain't even funny. He ain't All he funny got like is this, this for real. This, I mean, it's just like, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it's hard enough to be great, mm-hmm. but it's even harder, you know what I'm saying, to deal with people trying to deal with you being great. So I guess that's the thing I'd be... Remember this. People will not cheer you on when you get what they want. Dang, that's a bar. And they also will be the first people to tear you down when what you have, which is what they want, gets taken away from you. Dang. Yeah, that's what people do, man. It's a cold game, man. You would just think that people would be happy for you. Why things- would miserable people ever be happy for you? That's one thing that social media has taught me. Social media has taught me more than anything. There's a lot of miserable people out there. I think that before social media existed, mm-hmm. it maybe shielded us from knowing that there's some really dark people. Because you, were Cause you really, didn't have to listen to their opinion. Because yeah, you were only really dealing with the people in your radius or your circumference. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was also saying this the other day, like in a random conversation. What do you feel about this? I was just saying that, like, you know, and I don't want to make this sound like this is an original thought because I know I've heard it somewhere. But so I just can't cite the source. But do you feel like social media almost makes it impossible to be monogamous or to be like faithful? Because Back in the day. Oh, baby. <laughs> so back in the day, you know, 20-year-old Doughboy, yeah. right? So now we're taking this to, you know what I'm saying, 20. Not, okay, that year. Yeah, yeah. yeah long, yeah, long time ago mm-hmm. when I was 20. You know, we had cell phones weren't even really a thing yet. They mm-hmm. were just kind of coming out. You went to, so in my life then, I would wake up, I would go to work, I would come home i had a circle of friends that mm-hmm. i deal with you know maybe we go here there we had places around sacramento which is not a huge space mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i met you in sacramento like you know you seen Capital, how i was california you seen how i was living out there yeah. it wasn't much to be you understand that but that's what it was you know what I'm saying? so that's what life was but now with social media you could literally be scrolling and looking at a chick in bali like mm. you know what i'm saying like you could literally be looking at a chick in wisconsin and and it's just like it just oh, it's it gives you that grass is greener mind state that I don't feel like we had back in the day. So do you feel like it makes it at least difficult? Yes, but think about social media and take it with a grain of salt. This is why you shouldn't argue with people in the comments. You know, you know that cousin that you have that is special needs that you go over your aunt and uncle's house and the the special cousin is there and you're like hey what's going on mm. and they're like hey and then they might have an episode or something like that and mm. bam and everybody be like just let you know yeah that's them, hey yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's your it. little cuz it's yeah. all love you know they don't mean nothing by because they don't know any any better mm-hmm. um social media is full of a lot of your little cousins <laughs> that have access to everybody mm. so now your little cousin can go on a video and be like ah you ugly mm-hmm and they don't mean anything by it right? because they don't even know what they're saying or they're just joking around. But here you read this comment and your whole day is ruined. Right. And you can't distinguish the people that are not special needs and the people that are genuinely um, trying to ruin your day. But see, that's the, and that's the thing. I be going off of the fact that we don't have enough data to even know how any of this is affecting us because it's all happening in real time. In real time, yeah. Like, it's like, we, it ain't like we can go and just be like, man, 
when I was growing up, I would just log off. I'm like, no, we, I didn't, we didn't have this. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I just feel like, I don't know, man. I just feel like uh, social media is just, and like you said, like, you know, you know, if you look at comments, like you said, they can have an effect on you because people don't know what you're going through. Like, mm-hmm. like you said, somebody gets to be like, you ugly. And what if I'm having one of them days where I just was feeling like I look old and my hair looks ridiculous on the podcast. And then I'm like, nobody noticed. Then I look at the comments, you ugly. Everyone notices. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, yeah, comments a lot of times, specifically where they get to you at, um, people can say things to get through your shield and hit you mm. for me it used to my uh my confidence used to really rely on people saying nice things about me in comments and it's like now i do so many different pieces of content that if i see some comments that don't acknowledge my greatness or they say something that i did wrong or something that I, whatever the case mm. it's like you can't live in that because the only person's opinion that really matters to me is my wife and my mother. You know what I mean? So it's like, and my sisters. But it's like, those are the people who really know you. Right. If some, if I drop a video and it's bad and the world hates it, or I say a comment and people hate it and they're responding, like I left a comment on Love is Blind. <laughs> <laughs> I said, hey, get more black women on here, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> and they start lighting me up, right? I don't care. These aren't real people. They don't. They don't matter to me. But if my mother would have got on and be like, "Now nah, you know," you <laughs> she would have broke you down. <laughs> I'd have been like, "All right, let me delete it." But it's like if you turn that phone off, none of that exists. You can live right. your life. I think the problem is when people. You ever talk to somebody and they have like a bad social media day, and then they're like they're bringing it up, and you're like, "Hey, man." People have bad social media days. That's a yeah. thing. Where it's like you read a whole bunch of bad comments and they start talking to you as if you've seen it. Yeah, like they gotcha. start treating it like, yeah, did you see that comment? And you're like, what are you talk? What? What? <laughs> what, what post? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, no, because because they said this and I said this. You're like, you're letting this affect you too much. Right. If it get that crazy, I just turn my phone off and start watching something to make me happy. Yeah. I feel like we're we're really in that age where, yeah, I think and I think sometimes I be having to to just disconnect because I took some time, <laughs> I took some time off last year where I just wasn't posting, but I would still like go in there and lurk. Mm. <laughs> but what everybody is talking, what about. They talking I, about. I just wouldn't say anything. Yeah. But I want to see what everyone else is saying. Yeah. Is, is anyone missing me? No? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll let myself out. <laughs> so. I'll let myself out, man. <laughs> I'll be seeing like, uh, <laughs> I'll be on Instagram a lot because I watch like dog videos to calm me down. Like whoa, I'm like, oh, whoa, this is really whoa, nice. Whoa, 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 whoa. Very relaxing. You watch dog videos to calm you down? You don't. You own dogs. I don't own dogs anymore. I lost my dogs in the split. Both of them? Yeah. I thought you just lost one. No, she no, got no. The well, one. I gave Kiara's dog to her grandparents. Oh, you ain't the, got nobody in the crib. Man, it's just me. You Can, need that dog. Huh? You need that dog. No, because he really wasn't having the best life with me. I was a terrible dog father. Hey, man. <laughs> what? Like, you got to walk dogs you like, feed frequently. Too. You got, I mean, I fed him. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I, I just used to look at him like, man, you deserve better. Oh, like, that's sweet of you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's a good dog. And like, he be looking so happy. I be like, yeah, man. When the last time you saw him? Um, not too long ago, I just seen him um, Christmas time because their family had came down. So you know, we we had all got seven. He like remembered me and everything. He, he was, jumped like, up and down, chasing his tail and stuff. I was yeah. like, oh my god, that's love. Yeah, yeah but that's I, authentic love. But I know if he could have talked, I would have said, "You want to go with me or them?" He'd be like, ne- uh, Negro, I'm gonna stay with them. <laughs> <laughs> but bye <bye-bye>. bye. <laughs> so take care of yourself, no boy. <laughs> but um, no, nah, what was the thought I was just saying? So um, social media. Yes, but comments what? leaving the uh, leaving the internet coming back. Did anybody miss me? Dang, I just lost my whole thought. It was a good one too, um, but no, um, no, I do like live alone by myself, and not even the dogs, man. It's super alone, man. You need somebody in there, man, or at least leave the house at least once a day. I've got a ma- well. I do be leaving. Well, I wasn't going to leave today. I have a master plan. I'll tell you off camera what it is. As long as you go outside and let the sun hit your face, your day be better. Like when you get fresh air outside the house, even if you just walk outside for five minutes and look up at the sky, take a deep breath, your day is better. I've been hearing about that because there's vitamin D in the sun. Pause. Oh, I did walk into that. Woo. I did. I did walk. <sighs> Side note. Hey yo. Okay, I'm gonna just say because pa- there's vitamin D in the I'm gonna, sun. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just say that I'm gonna say pause before I say this next thing. Uh-huh. It shouldn't be a pause. <laughs> we should we should try this thing called the 75 hard challenge. 
<laughs> I'm glad you said it. <laughs> Have you heard about it? No. What's okay, that? so it's this thing, right? Or it's called hard. It's called seventy five hard or hard seventy five. Can you look that up for us? Conclusion is called seventy five hard or hard seventy five. Basically, for seventy five days, you do a diet of your choice. It doesn't matter what you do. So you could just pick whatever diet you want to do. You do a diet of your choice. Seventy five hard. hard. Okay, so seventy five hard. <sighs> Pause. All right. So um, you uh, you do a diet of your of your of your choice. You drink a gallon of water a day. Okay. For ten minutes a day, you read something that's self betterment, self like self improvement, self improvement. Um, two workouts for forty five minutes each. One of which has to be completed outside. No. No matter what. No. You have your your thing upstairs. What are you talking about? That's upstairs. You can work out of you can work out outside. You can you can work out outside. I'm talking about on the roof. I'm mm-hmm. not going outside to work out. It's cold as hell outside. That's the thing. I'm you're not ready. For, you're not ready for 75 hard. I let me tell you what I do. I walk to the gym. That's, that's outside, part of your 75. But that only takes me like 10 minutes total, and then I'm in the gym, do my thing, and I'm right back home. Well, then go twice, and you'll get your 40 minutes. No, I'm already out. <laughs> you're not ready for 45 70. minutes outside. Maybe it's something. In the a, it's, it's something about like I think you said like with the sunshine. We live in California. It doesn't matter. But going outside, letting the sun hit you, or just taking a deep breath and letting the wind hit your face is better than just being in the house. Well, that was the last thing. I think that that was the last thing. Those were all the things that you got to do. So I'm 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 thinking of doing seventy five hard. Do it, man. I'll keep you posted. You should. I will. My mom we- asked me about you earlier. She was like, yeah, I've been watching the show, and uh, I'm so glad to see you and Doughboy back. And uh, yeah, you know, I you know, I hope he does um, go to the gym and feel better. I said, well, it's something that you, you got to want to do. You can't just do it. And she's like, yeah, yeah, and all of that. My mom I love your sweet. mom, man. She's the sweetest lady, man. She's like your whole family, man. Everybody that I've met, you know, Great I'm saying, on your side, man. Definitely yeah, man. good people. Um, we just hit an hour. It's time to go. We did what we supposed to do. Um, you got anything else you want to say to the people before we get out of here? Uh, I'm sorry, most deaf for Doughboy's feelings and nah, thoughts. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah, nah. And we're going to cut that up as a clip, and I hope it go viral. Yeah, I mean, you said that with attitude. You rolled your eyes at the end. That's how you know <laughs> it's real. Man. And I, I most, hope it go viral. I'm, I'm most deaf going to let him know how I feel. Yeah. See what that, I did there? I see what you did there. That was fine. <laughs> All right, man. Well, we want to thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Justice League podcast. I have been your boy, Doughboy. That's how I'm saying it. And you have been. CT is dope. And we'll see you guys next time. And Peace. You have been. <laughs>